I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Dr. King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? The humanitarians we honor today clearly understand Dr. King's call and are answering by making dramatic improvements in the lives of so many others. Today, we celebrate the content of their character. Hello everyone, I'm Tamara Banks and welcome to the 2024 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards as we honor six inspirational businesses in our community and pay special tribute to one of our civil rights pioneers with the Trailblazer Award. This year marks the 39th anniversary of this event. In 1986, two years after the passage of House Bill 1201, which established Dr. King's birthday as a holiday in Colorado, Mrs. Wilma J. Webb founded the Martin Luther King Jr. Business Social Responsibility Awards. The event gives the business world an opportunity to honor the memory of Dr. King and reaffirm their commitment to the values he taught us. Nine years ago, the name of the award was shortened to the Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards. A total of 272 corporations, individuals, and nonprofit organizations have received this meaningful award over the years. Today, we add seven more names to this distinguished list. Covering Colorado first, and today is Mental Health Action Day. A, day where we are... A true community partner, CBS Colorado embraces its commitment to inclusion, diversity, and equity inside the TV station and out in the community. Elevating Latino voices and elevating black voices are CBS News Colorado programs that shine a bright light on Latino and black Coloradans who've made lasting contributions. I think oftentimes those individuals have not had an opportunity to share their voice. They have not had that opportunity to tell their stories. We want to make sure we are telling those stories because those are very vibrant communities within this market. CBS Colorado is committed to impactful local journalism from all Colorado communities. I'm your reporter up in the mountains. Aurora is my home. Covering Colorado first. In Denver. In Castle Rock. In Brighton, I'm Alan Janae. Justin Adams. We're telling the stories that matter to you. Such a big impact. And I'm your Northern Colorado reporter. With that goal in mind, a new approach to covering the news was launched in 2023. What we've done is we've assigned 17 journalists currently to 10 cities, counties, and regions across Colorado and they're embedded in those communities. The news then comes up from the community. So rather than the newsroom deciding what the stories should be that day, the news instead comes from our communities. Each year, CBS Colorado donates thousands of dollars in cash, airtime, and production services to many community organizations. So whether it's connecting in celebration of something or of somebody or just coming together to be able to support the community during a really difficult time. Bringing people together, connecting people and sharing those voices is very important and probably more important than ever. Founded in 1893 as the Denver Artist Club, today the Denver Art Museum is one of the largest art museums between Chicago and the West Coast. It was really an artist club. And then I think over the decades, it really morphed into a more and more serious museum. In 2000, they selected world-famous architect Daniel Liebeskind to expand the museum campus. The Frederick C. Hamilton Building opened in 2006. Many of the museum's collections reflect the culture of the people from this part of the world. The real interesting thing about the Denver Art Museum is we collected works by Native American art for almost a hundred years now. And we did not collect it as anthropological collection to show how different peoples lived at different times, but really to collect it under artistic excellence. And the Western American collection has grown to be one of the top collections of its kind. The Denver Art Museum is an encyclopedic museum, meaning art from all over the world can be seen right here. Artists from Nigeria, Ethiopia, Amako Bafu is a young artist from Accra, Ghana, whose exhibition, Soul of Black Folks, focuses on black life. 
And that's what really excites me about the Denver Art Museum, that we have so many different cultures on our, our roof. And of course, we don't only want to look at them with a white angle or a perspective from um, a Caucasian male in this case, but we really want to bring as many voices together. The Denver Art Museum is also committed to community outreach, like participating in events such as Juneteenth and the Dragon Boat Festival. The Diverse Business Center at the American Red Cross of Colorado and Wyoming is the result of an idea created by Marugan Palani with Denver Public Schools and Gino Greco, CEO of the American Red Cross of Colorado and Wyoming. We provide them a place to be where they need to be to provide collaboration in and amongst them and to partner with us to help develop some of our own competencies. The suite of offices, training rooms, and meeting spaces was opened in April of 2019 to house the Asian Chamber, Colorado Black Chamber, Hispanic Chamber, LGBTQ Chamber, and the Rocky Mountain Indian Chamber. It's given to us complimentary and it's, it is really so wonderful. And the Diverse Business Center also benefits the Red Cross. Being able to build a bridge with communities and come alongside communities so that they better know us and we better know them and ultimately they think of themselves as part of the Red Cross as well as the Red Cross as part of their community allows us to serve more people, to serve them more equitably and really to serve people generally better. The purpose of these Chambers of Commerce is to provide culturally competent economic development and business opportunities to members, partners, and sponsors. With the co-working space within the offices of the American Red Cross, these Chambers enjoy a more efficient flow of collaboration and idea generation. We are really giving professional services. We're very sincere in what we do. And I, I think you really need a brick and mortar to be able to present that. In 1908, the Colorado Museum of Natural History opened its doors to the public. The name was changed in 1958 to the Denver Museum of Natural History. By that time, more than one million people had visited. So the secret to this is really our, our temporary exhibits. The almost 750,000 square foot museum's name was changed again to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science in 2000. More than four million artifacts and specimens paint a picture that illustrates how all living beings, past, present, and future, are all connected. For example, all creatures look at the same moon for centuries. The mastodons looked at that super moon, and I looked at that super moon on August 30th. So we're all connected back through time, and in the eons, our progeny will look at that super moon as well. In the early days of the museum, only about 10% of the visitors were people of color. So the museum created the Curiosity Cruiser in 2022. We built the Curiosity Cruiser to go to fairs and festivals to engage with the communities where they are. In 2023, the Curiosity Cruiser served almost 30,000 people in 50 locations, including events like Denver Pride Fest, Juneteenth, and Cinco de Mayo. Today, more than 30% of visitors are from diverse backgrounds. Opening doors to science and history can leave quite an impression. A few years ago, uh, right when I first got here, we were at a reception in Fort Collins and there was an astronaut there, a woman astronaut. And somebody asked her why she became an astronaut. And she said, because I went to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science when I was a kid. The world is often riddled with strife and divisiveness but the Denver Museum of Nature and Science can bring people together. The tagline for our next strategic plan is, we create belonging and hope through nature and science. And I believe that's, a, that's something we're called to do today that really is important in to today's world. Jacobs is a global company solving the world's most critical problems while being mindful of the impact their work has in neighborhoods and on families like development at the National Western Center in the Elyria Swansea neighborhood. The impact of that neighborhood is big. That's a huge project. A lot of construction, several years. How do we make sure the kids are safe walking to school? With 61,000 employees worldwide, including offices in Denver, Jacob's action plan for advancing justice and equity was born out of the murder of George Floyd in 2020. 
led by the Arambe Group, the Black Employee Network. They were emotional conversations, very emotional conversations. People talking about being afraid for their children, being afraid for themselves, worrying about their, their mental health at work. And Jacobs encourages its employees to make the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday a day of service. And so we ask people to go out and then report back to us and let us know. What'd you do? How'd you do? Did you go to a church function? Did you go to a rally? Did you go to cleanup in your community? Under the Together Beyond program, Jacobs has created eight employee networks and pledged more than $10 million over five years to the black community for STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics education. We're gonna plant a seed. And with that seed, it'll go well beyond those five years. Scholarships committed to historically black colleges and universities like Drake State Community College have created a partnership with NASA. Then NASA hires students to create 3D facilities on the moon. And they're doing things literally out of this world. Around the world and within the company, Jacob's goal is to make sure everyone is seen, heard, and valued. We succeed when we stop and listen to each other's stories. We stop and understand each other's cultures. And the beautiful part about that is then both of our talents can thrive. U.S. Bank is committed to a culture of diversity, from the workforce to supplier diversity to their community involvement. U.S. Bank's approach to DEI is all about creating a place where people know they belong, their voices matter, and their ideas are valued. For example, they have 10 BRGs, business resource groups. The most recent one added, the Black Heritage Group. We're really very, very proud of this work because it connects employees to a greater network where they feel seen, valued, and heard. And they believe that small businesses like taco trucks and mom and pop restaurants are the heartbeat of the community. So we know that if U.S. Bank can help power that potential, that really changes lives, changes generations, and changes the way that people live. In 2021, U.S. Bank launched a unique long-term approach to addressing the racial equity gap. We have a program called Access Commitment, specifically structured and created to help black-owned businesses, BIPOC and Hispanic-owned businesses in our community. And U.S. Bank is embedded in diverse communities focused on bringing arts, culture, and business together. Making sure that we're supporting programs, projects, initiatives of organizations like Cleo Parker Robinson Dance. They even have a branch in the heart of the Five Points neighborhood. We were proud to have the first African-American woman physician, Justina Ford, on the mural. And it's a special place. We always say that if you want to be a part of a community, you have to be in the community. In 2007, we began honoring pioneers in the Civil Rights Movement with the Trailblazer Award. The 18th winner of this prestigious honor is Peggy Wortham. Born and raised in Danville, Virginia, Peggy Wortham remembers white and colored signs above the water fountains at the courthouse. And then we couldn't eat at the counters uh, at that time. Just the thought of the discrimination she endured evokes deep emotion and traumatic memories. The future civil rights pioneer remembers how she and her fellow students were doused with water hoses while trying to get African Americans registered to vote in her hometown. I have to really be thankful and appreciate my mom because she let her 16-year-old daughter go off to Washington, D.C. <laughs> but my mom knew that I'd have a better life probably in Washington, D.C. than we did in Danville because it was just so, so racist and so segregated. In August of 1963, Peggy attended the historic March on Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Everywhere she looked, she saw black excellence. Harry Belafonte, Mahalia Jackson, John Lewis, and of course, Dr. King himself. A really good feeling to be around black people who were really trying to do something positive for other black people. It was my first introduction to hearing, you know, about how you could, you know, change, how the system could be changed. And I think that's what set it, things in motion for me. Peggy moved to Colorado in 1964, where she later graduated from Metropolitan State University. Metro was a real good experience because um, Senator Glory Tanner was there at the time. She was involved. Edna Mosley was there, you know, involved at Metro. While in Denver, Peggy worked with the Civil Rights Commission, the Urban League, 
and the NAACP to improve housing discrimination for black people. In her 50 years in Denver, Peggy has been a vital thread in the tapestry of our community. She started out with Governor Richard Lamb and ended with Mayor Wellington E. Webb. In the Webb administration, Peggy helped fulfill the dream of Mayor Webb and Mrs. Wilma J. Webb of making sure the city had a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. statue at Denver City Park that residents could be proud of. I remember one night, two o'clock in the morning, we were up working on uh, the project uh, to uh, make sure that the statue was erected and also on time and also had the money to do the things that you know needed to be done. She was also instrumental in making sure the Blair Caldwell African American Research Library became a reality. Peggy worked as an assistant to Councilman William Bill Roberts and assistant to Larry Borm, director of the Urban League of Metropolitan Denver. After leaving the Denver mayor's office, Peggy assisted with various mayoral campaigns, including Willie Brown in San Francisco, Lee P. Brown in Houston, and Bernard Kincaid in Birmingham. And she worked at the Democratic National Headquarters in Washington, D.C. But this civil rights pioneer says one of the most important ways to make a difference is to vote. If you don't get out and raise your voice and you know, talk about things that you don't like, if you're not involved in it, then you can't complain. Dr. King's memorable words of love, hope, and compassion have clearly stirred the souls of the humanitarians we honor today with the 2024 Martin Luther King Jr. Business Awards. We celebrate the content of their character and applaud their efforts to make life better for so many people in Colorado. Free at last! Free at last! Thanks, Baltimore!